Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I'm your host, David Streggy, and here I have a review for you. And I'm not even sure where to begin. Uh, I've had a fascination with Ayn Rand's, uh, Ayn, Ayn Rand's uh, novelizations of her novels for many years years and her ideas behind the objectionist movements and I came across a copy of a film that was directed by uh, Goffredo Alessandrini in 1942 that was originally two different films originally um and it is an adaptation of ayn rand's novel we the living but uh they were originally two different f uh, films now goffredo alessandrini was a very successful director during um benito mussolini's uh, regime in italy and his films were more uh, noted for their extreme realism. And it kind of anticipated the neorealist movement that was to follow after the war. And this film, uh, this film, though it was put uh, separated into two di uh, different films one being um noi vivi meaning we the living and the second being adio kira meaning goodbye kira this was filmed during world war ii and it originally had some propaganda against the Bolshevik revolution, I believe at the time, um, and had more of a political message than Ayn Rand's novel originally had. And I'm glad that I actually read the novel, uh, at least up, uh, up until a certain point, because otherwise I would have been somewhat lost on some of the political um, situations that were going on in this film. And um, here's um, the copy of the film that I picked up. So, and uh, some of the back of it, as you can see some of the picture involving uh, 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 two of the actor, uh, actors and actresses. But the story of this film is almost as is almost as cool as the background. I mean, you have a young uh, woman and her family, um, a, a young woman by the name of Kira Argonov, uh, Argonova, who is played by Alita Veli. Uh, um. We see that she arrives with her family to the Petrograd, which evidently is an area of St. Petersburg in Russia. And this is slightly after the Bolshevik Revolution. Um, and her father had at one point in time been an owner of a textile mill and uh, so they are returning to the city that they once uh, laid their birth and um, to try to pick up the pieces of their lives and see if they can't um, find a way of means to, uh, to live in this totally governmentally ran um, city. And they have to, they have to get papers 
they find out that um, once they arrive to distant, uh, distantly related co uh, cousins, the Dunayevs, um, that evidently there are many families who live inside uh, uh, quarters and you, uh, and you don't really have privacy. Um, I mean, there's a scene in the film um, now, now that it's relatively about three hours long, um, you can see that uh, there, uh, there's this one particular scene where Kira is getting ready to go uh, be a student at the college uh, uh, that um, she's attending. And um, either, either she has to go to classes or she actually has to go and work a Soviet job. But she doesn't... But there's a scene where there are like several people waiting in line to use the bathroom to even have a shower. And that was re uh, really kind of, you know, you know, you, you don't think of these things, uh, these everyday things that, uh, that we're, uh, we have like bathrooms and being able to go to the bathroom. You don't really think of these things until they're not there anymore. So, um, but anyways, Kira Arganova, if, uh, um, once she arrives with her family, um, there is a young man who is related to her and, or either friends of her family are related to her, uh, that goes by the name of Victor Dunaev. Um, who is played by Ario Pissou, or I think that's his, uh, the way you say his name. Um, and he initially tries to, it, it remembers her, uh, her when she was like, yay, hi. Um, of course, this, uh, this is somewhere in between 1922 and uh, set in 1922 to 1925. And, um, he remembers when she was very young. Well, um, he attempts to try to uh, take her around the city to show her the, you know, sights. Well, he comes onto her, and because of his trying to um, come onto her, um, immediately, it, it, that's like uh, something that puts a distance between her and this young man. And this young man, he's a student as well, um, but he's also um, becoming a communist and a leader in his communist party. And as the film draws out, you start to see that this whole city is run by political factions. You are either part of the government or you are part of the communist party. And... Uh, Ultimately, that spawn from Victor led her to meet another young man who she immediately falls head over heels in love with, who goes by the name of Leo Kovalansky. And he becomes a pinnacle figure. Um, in this tale because she goes beyond, above and beyond to fight for the love of this man throughout this film, even though she is loved by another man. Um, and uh, Leo Kovalensky is played by uh, uh, Rosanna Brazi. And uh, I have to say that um, Leo's character, he's, he's very handsome, very debonair. Uh, but he's definitely got a lost soul kind of look to him. But there are some very romantic scenes between these two. Uh, two. And I think when it comes to wartime um, films, especially in the romance or in the, or in the romantic aspect, um, distance um, between lovers, you know, 
love can come much more easily when you're distanced from the one that you love. Uh, at least I think because the more that you're around each other, the more th uh, that you're going to argue with each other. Um, but th this is the kind of relationship that uh, this uh, that Kira and Leo seem to have throughout the film, um, and she doesn't real really realize his uh, political associations. She doesn't really care. All she cares about is being in his presence, being. Um, it's like he's like her, you know, little moment of happiness in, in the sadness and, you know, the, the level of poorness that, uh, that the people around her, her family, um, herself uh, as, you know, as the, as evidently the talk of war uh, is, you know, present. I mean, this is this is slightly after a, a, a people have been devastated uh, and and been oppressed by their government, and they are trying to survive afterwards. And this is in a moment where uh, you see you see some of the beginning political aspirations of the uh, Gestapo um, for the Russian secret police where, uh, where uh, there's another character that Kira Argonova um, meets by the name Andre Taganov who was played by Fosco Giacchetti or Giacchetti uh, uh, I'm not sure how to exactly uh, say his name but he is another strong character uh, that I believe um, where Leo Kovalensky, where at first he has like the sadness that he carries with him. Once the story pl uh, plays out and uh, um, he is honored later by a soldier that knew his father, um, he has a whimsical almost comical approach to, uh, to life, almost, almost a morose look at life as, um, as the story plays out. Whereas Andre Ta uh, Taganov, he's like, he, he, on an intellectual level, Kira and, uh, uh, Kira and Andre connect where she is op uh, opposed to, you know, what, what he stands for. Um, in a sense, it's almost like the intellect between Andre and Kira, whenever they get together, they are able to express their views openly to each other. And it's like to both of the men, she is attracted to in, in, a, in, a, in a sense. And during the uh, during a time of need when leo ultimately gets slightly signs of tuberculosis which um she f has to fall backwards on uh, andre's friendship and he begins and andre in turn tells her that he has fallen in love with her even though he, he's done terrible things you know but uh in a sense it's like in the end um andre realizes all of the suffering that she has had to go through and then he kind of ultimately falls on his sword in the end Offering himself uh, uh, self up to a higher cause, and that that's where um, Ayn Rand's uh, objectivity comes in, in the hand. Where, in the end, he realized, uh, you know, with uh, with all these political parties running everything, uh, thing, you kind of have to remember exactly who you are in this whole th uh, thing. What exactly are we fighting for? I mean, I mean, 
the thing that you uh, fight for the most is freedom, the freedom to be, uh, be yourself, the freedom to, to call yourself or refer to yourself as I and not we. I will live. And as long as you live under a um, political party or uh, you live for the state or uh, you live for your country, as long as you do everything you can and die for, the, uh, for them and not for yourself, how can you live with your soul? You know, that kind of thing. So, uh, so there, uh, there are some deeper levels of, you know, psyche that, uh, that are, you know, somewhat explored through here. And there are some very interesting conversations and understandings, I think, that uh, were beyond this film's reaching at that point in time. I mean, I don't think that um, Kira expected Andre to understand in the end exactly what she had to go through. And I don't think Kira entirely, totally understood how much sacrifice Andre would give. In any case, I, I mean, there were some, uh, uh, there were some other characters um, like, um, Kovalensky, um, he had he had uh, he had something in common with um, another political character who there was a moment where he called him a fraud. Uh, th uh, this character went by the name of Pavel Syra uh, Syra uh, Syrov, who was played by Emilio Sigoli or Kid. Sigoli, and he seemed to um, kind of be uh, be part of the communist um, party, um, where there there was actually a woman slightly um, running some of the de uh, defensive moves behind the party uh, that went by the name of Comrade Sonia. Who was played by Cesarina uh, Giraldi, um, and uh, she seemed like she was a strong political candidate uh, date, uh, uh, that was backing um, some of these men, including Victor, who ultimately, um, I think, I like the interactions between um, the two actors, uh, uh, Rosanna Brazzi and. Uh, um, Fosco Giacchetti when, um, when, uh, when there was a wedding that was involved when the two met and they didn't entirely know exa uh, exactly what the entire story of the two, uh, uh, of, of the two and were in the lives of Kira Arganova. It, it, it's what interwove these men together that kind of drove the love apart from um, from Kira, from Leo, e even from Andre. And I guess I like uh, uh, the fact that no one ended up entirely happy in the end, even though, you know, there were memories of wh uh, what went on in the end. I think one of the characters that I like the most in here, though, was... Uh, there was a character that played um, um, the man who was slightly a drunk. He played the um, played a GPS officer uh, who knew the father of Kovalensky, the man who uh, who blindsided the. Uh, revolution, um, an admiral of the Baron Red Fleet, um, and there were was a moment where where this um, GPS officer wa was explaining how he had actually, you know, rounded up a, a, a ton of 
you know, people and shoved them into furnaces and killed them, you know, for, uh, for this, you know, freedom. And I think that, uh, uh, I think his name was uh, Tashenko. Um, and he was played by Giovanni Grasso. And he ended up falling on a sword as well for his friend. So ultimately, I enjoy, enjoyed this uh, uh, film. It, you have to be able to under, uh, understand some of the story be, before you go into this film. And I like some of the ideas behind it. I like. Now, in 1980, now in the 80s, um, I believe Duncan Scott began to work um, on restoring this film. Originally, it was about four hours long. And um, he ended up getting together with Ayn Rand and um, editing out much of the um, fascist um, propaganda and leaving the story with, uh, with, uh, with almost an exact, you know, um, this is probably one of the best um, book to film adaptations I have seen of a film. And um, with being 30 years out of existence, um, almost, because uh, that's, or, or at least 25 years out of existence, uh, the film was re re recut, re-edited, and uh, resubtitled and uh, was put out to the public in 1986. And that was the, in Colorado, of all places, was the first showing of it, of the film outside of Italy since World War II. So um, then it was released to the U.S., so ultimately, if you enjoy my description of this film, um, definitely uh, um, check it out for your own self. I enjoyed um, watching this film from start to finish. Um, it was definitely a long haul, but uh, I I'm glad that I uh, finally w watched it in its entirety. And uh, though it's in subtitle, I enjoy the characters all around. There were some very strong characters and some very weaselly ones too <laughs> throughout the whole thing, uh, thing as well. So um, um, if you have seen the film, definitely comment below if you have. Um, if you have not as of yet, um, definitely like and subscribe to our page. I will definitely have some more cool reviews for you. Um, so definitely thanks for listening. And uh, I know this was a longer review, but um, check this uh, film out on uh, on your own. If you're a film lover, you'll, you'll definitely enjoy this uh, uh, film. It may, it may be more of a drama, but um, I enjoyed it. So I was, I was intrigued and, uh, I was impressed. So in any case, uh, thanks for listening. Have a nice day, evening or morning, wherever you